Dynamics. Hi, everybody, and thank you for coming here today. Uh, the topic of my presentation is DevOps reducing time to market case studies. Um, at first, uh, let me say a few words about myself. My name is Mikhail Tirentiev. I'm a senior DevOps at Grid Dynamics. I've seen a number of different clients and projects, but all of them was uh, in the e-commerce field. So I will speak a lot about sales and money. Sorry about this, guys. And um, let me start with my thoughts on why actually enterprises need DevOps. First thing obviously coming to my mind is uh, just to spend money on them. This is kind of a joke. Uh, but fortunately, it's not always the case. Actually, business about the making money and the properly implemented DevOps practices may help with it. When implementing DevOps practices, improvements are happening from both operations and development sites. So operations get better stability of running applications, better uptime, less headache while maintaining them, better scalability, and so on. I would say that we could even eliminate the need for operations at all. And uh, developers from other side get better code quality, um, less pain while trying to build and deploy it, and uh, overall faster development cycle time. And so overall enterprise gets more money, and it becomes more profitable, while the DevOps processes, uh, DevOps approaches are being adopted. And it's become easier to develop new features which are being required on the market. Um, <clears throat> development uh, cycle time is closely related to time to market. So uh, let me explain how I see it. Time to market is a time passed since you have an idea of a product until you have this product available on the market. In IT world, it's usually time which you have to spend since you have an idea of a feature till you have this feature deployed and working in production. It includes time required for development, testing, and um, releasing feature to production. In this presentation, I would like to show how the adoption of DevOps practices may help reducing time to market. I've chosen three different cases. All of them are obviously different. and. Uh, each of them had its own degree of, adop of adoption of uh, DevOps practices. And uh, some of them were pretty advanced in terms of DevOps. But in each case, we were able to reduce uh, TTM. I don't want to speak a lot about tools. Um, next presentation will be more technical. But would like to roughly give a kind of historical overview, uh, telling which problems we faced, how we are solving them, and how it was improving over the time. Let me begin with the first case, um, from mainframe to the cloud. So uh, people often don't like changes, and it's not always for customer. Uh, it's not always easy to customers to realize the need for changes. And a case I would like to talk about is not an exception. Uh, so let me start with explaining how uh, it. Um, so let me start with an example of how bad it could be uh, when implementing changes is too hard and time consuming. Once upon a time in the West, our future customer had a big old mainframe, that guy on the left. And um, it was a pretty old legacy application, custom one, running on that mainframe, serving all the e-commerce business. Since it was really old legacy, people who developed it mostly left the company, and it was really hard to maintain it, develop further, and nobody knows um, how to deal with it if something goes wrong. You may know about so-called peak time. Uh, it's a time a few weeks around the Thanksgiving day in the United States where major retailers had uh, a lot of uh, sales and they are making a huge portion of their annual income during these few weeks. And during this peak time, a lot on the infrastructure is enormous compared to usual time of year. So the next time, so the next peak time came and the old mainframe gone down for some reason. Since it was so hard to maintain it, nobody was able to bring it back fast, and nobody was able to migrate the system fast. And companies spent several weeks, really several weeks, to just bring it up back. And uh, almost all the peak time was wasted. So they lost a lot of money, a big one. 
And it become clear that it cannot go this way. And um, the DevOps journey begin. Here is a starting point when time to market was like infinite. After the epic fail of the old mainframe, the decision was made to perform rare platforming and replace it with uh, some modern system. One of uh, competitive uh, e-commerce uh, framework had been chosen and the first rare platforming began. Uh, at first, uh, there was no CI-CD process in place. We were receiving so-called code drops, that boxes. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, basically just archives with the code uh, which we were supposed to build and deploy them manually. It usually was happening once in a week. I mean, we were receiving it once in a week. The build process was taking about two hours and the deployments were a nightmare. Um, it was taking about four hours to deploy to a single environment and uh, deploying this new code drop to all the environments, to all the test environments could easily take up to a week because we had several environments for test. So time to market at this initial point was something about three months. Not only because development takes time, but almost uh, also due to this manual and time consuming build and deployment and release process. But uh, there was our team to help with it. So uh, we've done a number of improvements. We've introduced version control system particularly Git. We built the deployment and build automation and introduced first CI-CD pipelines for the system. It all allowed us to dramatically reduce uh, time required to build features and deploy them to the test environment. Deployment to the test environment now uh, take half an hour instead of four hours. There was no need for manual uh, activities. It was easy to roll out a number of uh, environments in parallel, as much as you need. The development time got reduced, uh, but the release process was pretty major at this point of time. And it was hard to get all the features being developed by different developers and different branches working okay together in release. So there were tons of conflicts and uh, merge hell was in place. And due to this fact, even after uh, introducing CI-CD pipelines and automation, TTM was about two months. And uh, one month of this two was taken by manual integration activities. In order to address the merge hell, uh, we proposed our clients to adopt trunk-based development. Uh, before introducing new workflow, uh, they tend to have uh, a number of long-living feature branches, which is on the left, and uh, we also had several release branches being developed in parallel. And uh, it was really, um, it all lead to big troubles while trying to integrate all this feature in a single release. So, uh, as I had already said, there were numerous conflicts and uh, some features which were perfectly working by themselves in a feature branch were just not possible to merge and uh, they were just skipped from production release. Then, after adopting single trunk workflow, it changed. Developers got rid of a long living feature branches and uh, started to merge as soon as possible. For sure, they still have to perform merges but now it's not that painful and uh, not sound time consuming. So the development between uh, code in a developer's feature branch, uh, the difference between code in the developer's feature branch and in the main line are minimal. Instead of merging at the last moment, uh, they started to merge as soon as possible. And this had really helped us to resolve uh, the merge hell. TTM uh, got reduced thanks to this uh, to one month from the idea to the feature working in production. And we had production deployments happening once in two weeks. It was the best we achieved with initially choosing e-commerce platform. And it took three years because enterprises doesn't like pretty fast changes. However, it's obviously was not perfect and we faced the next problem, endless rebased and review loop. The code base was a big monolith and uh, developer development, code review, deployment, and uh, all other related things obviously took some time. And also, that big code base was uh, continuously modified in parallel by approximately 200 developers. So, let me explain what I mean by uh, meaning this endless loop. 
uh, if you was the only one man working on the code, you just taken out from the main line, work on your feature, and merge it back. No problems. But since you have 200 competitors working in the same time on the same code, there are a lot of chances that you will have that some of them will merge their changes before you. And uh, due to this fact, uh, you will have to resolve some merge conflicts, rebase your code, or do some other changes which you had not expected initially. And when you've done these changes, you have to, again, go on through the review, build, deployment, and so on. And uh, in this case, there could be other developers who, again, um, change the main line before you. So you have to redo your job again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And this is what's really happening with some unlucky developers. There's no chance to escape from this loop. So the solution was this, for this was obvious. We had to reduce the size of a shared code base. So the entire application had been replatformed again, re-architectured and split into microservices. Now each team got uh, its own small code base, shared by the only few people, with a pretty fast build and deployment time and easy resolvable rare merge conflicts. It was like a brief of fresh air for people. Build takes minutes and become pretty easy. You no longer have 200 competitors on your code base, but just a few faults which you know well. Integration started to cost nothing due to this fact for developers. I'm obviously not sure, uh, honestly not sure if it's totally good thing because integrations, we started to pay for this integration, I mean DevOps, but I can cope with it. Thanks to this replatforming, time to market got reduced to just one week. But nothing is perfect under the sun, and uh, the deployment uh, on a few minutes, in a few minutes, was a case for only test environments. But the production environments was running in a um, private AT&T data center, which was managed by the AT&T folks, and we had no access to this at all. So we were managing the deployments via the phone. This obviously led uh, to delays with uh, deployment to production. So we migrated to the cloud. And um, now we had the entire control over our, our infrastructure and uh, ability to scale microservices as we need them. Such scalability and control allowed us to reduce infrastructure costs during the peak time and in the same time keep the system working perfectly under the enormous load. So that's actually it about the case one. That's how we reduce time to market on each improvement phase. And uh, it helped our customer to earn a lot of money. And each year it really helped, uh, had a record break in sales. Let me continue with the second case, negative time to market. It's again e-commerce business, uh, not that big as the previous one. But um, let me explain the initial situation. They had a set of uh, .NET monolith applications running uh, in front of Microsoft SQL database. In the private data center, no CICD pipelines and obviously bad scalability. Problems were pretty usual. It was hard to introduce new features, try to integrate, uh, hard to integrate them, hard to deploy to production and easy to break the things. It all was leading to a big time to market and uh, it was something about one month in the beginning. And uh, you can say that it's not that bad, one month, comparing to previous case, but this is not that big company and the code base is not shared, it's not 200 and more developers, just maybe 15 to 100, 50 to 100. So it's rather big time. So uh, due to this um, one month time to market, uh, it was hard to compete on the market with uh, other retailers. Uh, so imagine one of your rivals had released new cool feature and now makes a lot of money on it. And when you have low time to market, it's pretty easy to you to come with similar features. So the time when your rivals get all the benefits will be reduced. Our client was doing okay and it was competitive on the market, but in opposite to the previous case, they decided not to wait until the epic fail and improve the things in advance. So here, improvements we've done. 
At first, it was uh, replatformed again from .NET monoliths to a set of Java-based microservices. Uh, we re uh, replaced uh, MySQL database, not MySQL, Microsoft SQL database, uh, with uh, NoSQL databases like Elasticsearch, Redis, Cassandra. We have migrated from the private cloud to AWS, managed, started to manage all the infrastructure in the, as a code, and uh, developed CI-CD pipelines. As a first result, developers uh, got all the tools which allowed them to build and deploy the code, even to production. It also led to fastest time to market I had ever seen in my life. Uh, I will get back to this topic in the next slide. And uh, it provided us with pretty good infrastructure, flexibility, and scalability. And customer really started to make money on it because it started to release new cool features with the speed of light and uh, getting a lot of positive feedback on social and other media. Uh, now let me explain what I mean by negative time to market. There could be different visions on DevOps role in organization. Uh, some client uh, wants DevOps to manage all the process and uh, no change could reach the production without DevOps engagement and approval. And uh, in that case, DevOps usually are in charge of production support. Others are doing the opposite, so they're just asking us to provide the tools to automate the developer's routine work, and that's it. Not asking for any process. I personally don't like mm, both opinions. I believe it should be something in between. But this client was all about the second case. So we developed tools allowing developers to easily spin up any number of environments they need, mix them, integrate however they want, deploy whatever they want in any sequence. And uh, there was no ask from client to introduce a process of transitioning changes from the test to production environment. Uh, it was explicitly asked not to introduce a lot of process. Through we tried to explain that it matters. So uh, obviously we had a number of checks being performed on pull requests uh, while uh, CICD pipeline is running. But since the change passed CICD pipelines, it was totally developer's uh, decision where to deploy it, in which sequence, which version, and so on and so forth. So with a little time, it led to what I've called negative time to market, because developers started to deploy it directly on production. It obviously led to a number of integration issues. And uh, it was not possible to bring down the service because we had a blue-green deployment, canary, and other stuff in place. So service will be always up and running. But having service up and running doesn't mean it works. There could be API changes, um, some other reasons why it doesn't work as a wall. That's why we need integration changes. Integration testing. So unfortunately, I don't know if uh, this process abused had been ever fixed because customer uh, got all the things they wanted from us and uh, we left the project. Uh, but I've heard that they realized and fixed it. But it's not for sure. And uh, as a conclusion for this case, I would like to say that DevOps has to bring not only the tools, but the process as well. And uh, process is more important or you will just get an automated chaos. Now let me continue with the third and the final case. Once again, big e-commerce shop, and uh, this time pretty advanced in terms of DevOps adoption. Initially, they already have Spring Boot microservices, CICD pipelines described as a code, all of it running in the cloud. Developers are managing production, and there is a process for transitioning such changes to production. But they had mixed approach to infrastructure management. Uh, some cloud infrastructure was just created from the applications code. Some of it was managed through the cloud formation or Terraform manifests. And uh, most of the infrastructure was just created by hand. So in this particular case, uh, time to market was uh, depend depending on uh, the need if you on the need of infrastructure or CI/CD changes. If you have to just change your code, it's pretty fast because everything is ready and everything is your hands. But uh, when you need to change the infrastructure or CI/CD pipelines, it should 
uh, it's being managed by other team, and they have their own processes, their own standards, and they are pretty rigid. And it should take a lot of time or may not happen at all because they are not complying with the standards, for example. So uh, same was happening with CI-CD pipelines. Since they were described it as a code, it was uh, really easy to generate a job uh, pipeline for your application, but it was really hard to really customize it. Uh, it was possible to exclude some job from pipelines or add them, reorder, but uh, when it comes to need to modify a particular job, uh, you have no other option ex in, uh, instead of forking it and writing all the functionality you need by yourself. And uh, if you are not familiar with Jenkins, it obviously could take a lot of time. So uh, what to do to improve the situations in this case? The first thing is to take control over your infrastructure. In the microservices world, um, infrastructure is essentially a part of your application. So it shouldn't be hard to create, for example, API gateway or load balancer for your service if you need it. So our customer got his own AWS account and we are building uh, standards and uh, processes which exactly fit the workflows used by our customer. Also, department-specific CICD pipelines are just a reflection of uh, department-specific processes. Next bullet is about the automation of infrastructure governance. Developers shouldn't spend a lot of time administering their infrastructure. Let the robots take care of it. So uh, they are free to, sorry. So we are building such tools um, to automate checks for the infrastructure security, compliance with our standards and so on. Um, to be able to do all these changes, you will have to manage your infrastructure as a code. In other case, it will be at least hard to automate. But we don't have only the infrastructure, we also have CI-CD pipelines and uh, they also should be managed as a code. Because it's hard to share, it's hard to version, improve, test, release them if, the uh, if you are managing them manually. In brief, it's just hard to manage Jenkins job manually. It's hard to manage manually anything. Uh, it's hard to manage anything when you have to manage it by your hand. So everything should be described as a code and automated. Having all this stuff implemented will allow to manage the infrastructure in a fast and uh, reliable way. So the TTM for the infrastructure and CI-CD changes will be pretty low. We are still in the beginning of this particular journey with this customer, but I can already see uh, some positive results. First thing is that creation of the infrastructure become by developers become fast and easy. They have blueprints for infrastructure as a code. They have all the permission to create any resources they need, but they don't have permissions to, um, for example, screw up the entire cloud account or break the security perimeter. And if they will create some bad resources, not compliant with our standards, robots will take care of it. This is a story I'm currently working on, actually. So we are getting pretty good mix of flexibility and security. But however, for now it's just in a test account and let's see how it will work in production. Other outcome, which I believe is more important, is that developers now obtaining the DevOps expertise. While, clarif while clarifying uh, requirements with them, we are uh, understanding their knowledge domain better, but this uh, happens also in the opposite direction. So developers now more and more uh, started to manage the infrastructure and CI-CD pipelines. And since they have control over all the things they need to run their applications, TTM got reduced to the minimum. So that's how we helped our clients to make a lot of improvements and reduce their time to market, be more competitive on the market and not earn much more money to be able to pay us well. And we still have a lot of interesting work to do in the future because nothing perfect under the sun. That's all from my side. Thank you for listening and any questions.